Well, now the second talk uh, will be given by Jean-Louis Pepin, a well-known pulmonologist from Grenoble, uh, French, and he will talk about home NIV and COPD, talk about screening, available tools and perspective. Jean-Louis. As you can see, it's a quite complex title, but we are going to uh, organize the presentation to, to address the different questions. These are my disclosures. Actually, we will see and um, it is just to remind to you that COPD obviously is a systemic disease with different phenotypes. We have discussed uh, uh, before the different phenotypes. And importantly, the clinical course is punctuated by acute exacerbation. We are going to discuss not only to remote monitoring of non-invasive ventilation, but on how to integrate this remote monitoring in uh, integrated care in COPD patients. We will see that uh, this remote monitoring and uh, uh, some uh, combination around are providing uh, very useful tools for long-term follow-up. We will see that remote monitoring can uh, uh, facilitate the identification, prevention and monitoring of uh, acute exacerbation using uh, information from the NIV device and uh, associated telemedicine platform. And uh, I will just open the uh, big data analysis in, uh, from NIV devices, and we will have some perspective on that. So again, and it was part of the discussion before, we have two main uh, endotypes or phenotypes. We have the obese COPD patient with limited reduction in respiratory function, uh, a lot of comorbidities, both metabolic and cardiovascular, and we have also the cachexic, underweight with muscle wasting, very severe emphysema and hyperinflation, and osteoporosis uh, COPD. And this is quite different, and you can see that during the follow-up and for acute exacerbation, the uh, type of exacerbation is different, mainly cardiovascular admission for this endotype, and mainly respiratory exacerbation for the second endotype. This is another way to present the uh, different phenotypes, the systemic and the respiratory. And you can see in this COPD excluded from the previous trial, we have a lot of uh, sleep apnea, we have not so much emphysema, you have obesity, you have no muscle wasting. And uh, uh, in this one, you have uh, hyperinflation, emphysema, less uh, um, sleep apnea and cachexia. And uh, the needs are different, the integrated care should be different, the NIV settings are different, and compliance to NIV is also different. This is just, just a, an observational code we did publish, comparing the systemic COPD to the respiratory COPD with a significant number of uh, uh, 230 um, patients. And you can see that the prognosis was different uh, with uh, uh, higher uh, mortality and uh, recurrence of exacerbation in the respiratory COPD groups. Also, there was a one hour difference in terms of compliance under an IV between the two groups. So when you look at to integrated care in COPD patients, you have to define what are the best tools to monitor this patient and uh, telemonitoring for NIV is one of these possibilities, but we have over one. You need also to define the respective roles of the operators, the physicians, the case managers, uh, the home care provider, and we are going to <coughs> see two different situations, the long-term follow-up and the prevention and treatment of exacerbation. Regarding the long-term follow-up, we will see that uh, if you have a, a, a significant number of patients to follow, uh, NIV remote monitoring is very useful to organize and <coughs> to integrate care uh, for long-term NIV. You have also some tools to identify inappropriate settings, residual events, needs for titration, and we will discuss action groups, NIV alerts, and combination of signals. This is uh, a work of uh, uh, my colleague uh, from Dijon. Uh, he was in the audience previously. And uh, he, he did demonstrate that up to 25% of patients continue to exhibit some abnormalities under an IV. You have uh, a lot of non-intentional leaks. You can get persistent pharyngeal obstruction or glottic closures. 
So when you have a huge number of patients to follow in your long-term cohort, you have now some tools. You can create some action group. You can identify people with residual events or therapy, therapy issues. You can uh, uh, click for a population with uh, difficulties with uh, compliance. And uh, these real-based filters uh, create efficiency for a large population management. And when you uh, have identified this patient from a large cohort, you can call the patient, adjust the setting, and retitrate non-invasive ventilation if needed. This is just to remind you uh, uh, a flow chart we, we have suggested uh, uh, with some colleagues in a somno and IV group. Uh, you have some goals to achieve in a patient treated by non-invasive ventilation, a clinical improvement, a reduction in PCO2, a normalization of uh, oxygen saturation during the night, and you have a lot of information coming uh, from the NIV software, and now with the action group, you can immediately look at the number of patients that require uh, an evaluation. You have some very simple information coming from the NIV software regarding non-intentional leaks, but it's more complex to decide if you have to change some setting, increase the expiratory pressure, if you suspect persistent pharyngeal collapse, or if you suspect persistent nocturnal hypoventilation. You need to uh, synchronize information regarding uh, transcutaneous PCO2 during the night to have an idea about uh, sleep quality and also to see uh, what are the changes in uh, uh, oxygen saturation. And this is just a clinical example. As you can see, this COPD patient under non-invasive ventilation, he has a persistent hypoventilation during REM sleep. You can see that even during a very limited uh, episode of REM sleep, you have a huge desaturation and uh, a concomitant increase in uh, uh, transcutaneous PCO2. And now you have uh, the possibility and uh, uh, to combine at home, and we are doing this more and more, uh, and to synchronize a transcutaneous PCO2, ambulatory respiratory polygraphy, and the raw data and the trend from, from the NIV device. So actually, you have the uh, very relevant information allowing we, you to rotitrate, to change the setting and to monitor the patients. The second topic is uh, the remote monitoring and uh, its interest to identify and to treat exacerbation uh, in uh, non-invasive ventilation. And there are some previous studies in the field. The first idea um, outside the field of non-invasive ventilation was to take advantage of the increase in respiratory rate before the exacerbation in people with uh, long-term oxygen therapy to predict and to early treat uh, this exacerbation. Actually, we <coughs> did a, a study with Jean-Christian Borel, recently published in Thorax, and uh, we look at the NIV parameters collected with different brands of NIV device. And uh, we ask to the patient to fulfill some exact pro questionnaire daily during six months. We included 64 patients. You can see very severe in terms of uh, COPD. And uh, uh, we, we, we have got 21 exacerbations. And this is the summary for uh, the whole group. You can see the exact pro questionnaire at normal values. And then you have uh, uh, the uh, initiation of exacerbation and a return to baseline values. And you can see that for the mean group, there was a progressive increase in respiratory rate, some variation in daily use uh, of the NIV, and also, interestingly, an increase in the number of respiratory cycles triggered by the patient. So there is a potential to use the monitoring uh, by the NIV device to implement this data in uh, uh, telemedicine platform and to predict exacerbation. And actually, we are uh, on the way to conduct a randomized control trial using this detection from the non-invasive ventilation with some false alerts in the standard care and telemonitoring in the intervention uh, arm and look at the cost effectiveness and uh, uh, the possibility to reduce the length of stay in case of exacerbation. 
It's also interesting to keep in mind that not only predicting the exacerbation is interesting, but also predicting the return uh, to normal condition, the recovery after exacerbation. And again, you can see you can do that uh, very easily by using the parameters of the NIV. There are many, many sensors now that are included in telemedicine platform to look at the improvement and the recovery up after exacerbation. And for example, there are some cow frequency uh, um, sensors that are available at home. The open question for the long term <coughs> is what is the best combination of sensor and application for integrated care in non-invasive ventilation patients? We have already available some uh, uh, data from the uh, NIV remote uh, telemonitoring, but it's certainly uh, interesting to uh, put around some over-connected device, uh, measuring sleep, actimetry, I think physical activity is uh, an integrated uh, um, uh, sensor uh, reflecting the, the overall uh, patient condition. And you can see that the, the decrease in physical activity and the return to uh, normal values in terms of number of steps is a very useful marker of clinical deterioration and improvement. We probably need to have more information regarding patient-centered outcome around uh, NIV telemonitoring. And there are now more and more uh, telemedicine platform around COPD care, including uh, uh, the following of NIV. You have some remote sensors. You have some uh, services around, including home care providers, case manager. You can call the patient. You have very different and complex systems. Uh, the problem, and it was the point of the cost effectiveness uh, previously discussed by Nick, this is a recent telecraft uh, trial published in Thorax. They did uh, include uh, a COPD patient, but also a cardiac failure patient. Uh, interestingly, 52 patients in this study were treated by non-invasive ventilation. And they put together questionnaires, heart rate monitoring, oximetry, weight scales, bl blood pressure monitoring, and there was a combination of symptoms uh, to try to uh, reduce and to treat early exacerbation. And actually, they, they didn't find any modification in terms of uh, rate of uh, uh, exacerbation or reduction in hospitalization with an, an increased health service usage, and they did not improve quality of life. So there is a potential, but we have to find the best combination of sensor, of information, of alerts around remote telemonitoring for non-invasive ventilation in COPD. I would like to, to finish my presentation uh, to underline the, the potential interest of uh, uh, knowledge uh, gained from device-generated uh, big data. And I would like to show you what we have uh, learned from that big data analysis in uh, CPAP-treated patients. And I think we can translate this strategy for non-invasive ventilation. These are uh, two papers, one on press and one uh, uh, in minor revision in the Journal of Clinical Sleep Medicine. The question was to look at, in a huge number of CPAP devices, what are the phenotypes of uh, central sleep apnea under CPAP. And you can see clear, uh, clearly four different phenotypes. One uh, pure OSA without central event. Uh, one phenotype with persistent central sleep apnea and over with emergent central sleep apnea and the last one was transient sleep apnea with normalization under CPAP. And interestingly, you can see that you have after two weeks or uh, at maximum one month uh, the response using the C CPAP device regarding the different phenotypes for the patient. And when you have a progressive decline in uh, compliance with CPAP in uh, this patient with uh, CSA under CPAP. And when you sh shift to assisted servo ventilation, you have immediately an improvement in adherence and a normalization in residual events. And uh, big data analysis in non-invasive ventilation, uh, we have the potential to get a lot of information because we have many, many very small studies involving at maximum uh, some uh, hundred patients. We have international variation in NIV settings and uh, using this big data analysis probably we can get 
the impact of different uh, settings and change in settings on residual events. We can look at the relationship between settings and adherence to NIV and also the true impact of flicks on residual events and compliance. So uh, my final message is to say yes, remote monitoring is uh, clearly a very important available tool for the management of people with COPD and non-invasive ventilation. But the future is probably to move from remote monitoring to virtual care clinic uh, in COPD patients. You can get uh, some apps and smartphone for uh, patient central outcome. You can have an access to, to the expert to, to ask questions. You can have some communities with uh, over caregivers of, of patients. And it's probably the, the way in the next year to organize the care for non-invasive ventilation in COPD. Thank you very much.